Welcome to the Dharmaraja College Education Research Basics Lecture Number Two. I'm sure you all have gone through the first lecture and done some activities related to the lecture. Go through the second lecture now. The Raj Education Research Conference 2020. Way forward. If I am to recall 10 steps that I have introduced in the first lecture, we have already done selecting a topic and deciding on an intervention and expected outcomes. Now, today's lecture, I will focus on objectives research methodology and selecting a sample. In the next lecture will follow the rest of the steps like writing a proposal, how to ensure the quality of the data collection, data analysis, abstract and research paper, and presentation and publications. So these are the three things that we have done already, your research topic and innovations. And today we will be focusing on what is your objective? We have already mentioned that selecting a topic in all three areas, the process of education, education environment, and outcomes. What is the process? Process is method of teaching, like whether you are adopting learner-centered teaching method, activity-based teaching method, and how we are going to engage students, how we are going to enhance the effectiveness of your teaching, how are we going to make them creators, how we are going to induce their creative thinking, and whether you are expanding your teaching into competencies, character building, and their wisdom. So that's sort of in all in methods of teaching. And assessment. Assessment, we have the, our traditional assessment of uh, responding to questions by writing on papers and you can ask recall type of question analytical type of questions and then higher order questions and you may assess students by projects and by their skills by their behaviors or assessments and then come into evaluation where we talk about effectiveness of a school like how much you are spending money uh, whether it is cost effective uh, what is the attitude of students, teachers, and parents? And what is the outcome? Whether your students are getting a, a, a better level of respect from the society and things like that. Education environment has two components. You have a physical structure and a human structure. Your buildings, arrangement of your classroom, and education material available, IT technologies, and so on and so forth. And all of those things can have effects on influence on education. Similarly, the human environment that is teachers, parents and the society has a greater impact on education. And especially when it comes to their behaviors, attitudes and character building, the teachers and parents play a major role. And then outcomes, when it comes to outcomes, that is the end result that we expect. Things like uh, how knowledgeable they are. Are they having a knowledge that is useful to the society? Are they making use of the knowledge to develop a better society, create new things, and whether they are analyzing the knowledge and developing new knowledge for the world? And how competent they are, their competencies, their communication, creativity, collaboration, connectivity, compassion, so on and so forth. There are so many competencies that we expect. And then we expect their uh, good character, their curiosity, their adaptability, their resilience, their ability to help others and, and their social sensitiveness to the social cultural differences. And then whether they are realizing, they understand their own self and they reflect about themselves and whether they are mindful 
and things like that. So you can uh, your topic can come from any of those areas like uh, in the process of education, education environment or education outcomes. The same thing we can look at and from another angle, uh, what is the process of education? Now, education is for the benefit of the society because the, it's the society that spends so much of money, commitment, time, devotion for education of children. It's huge, a lot of investment. So society expects something, expectations of the society for what and what is what do they expect from students so i think we should be sensitive about that as educators teachers what is the expectation of society and the entire process of teaching and learning should base on that so therefore for us to determine what to teach and what to learn uh, social expectations should be the basis and then what to teach or learn as i already mentioned is not only the subject matter but also their competencies, their character building, their wisdom and all that matters. And then come the question and how to teach. Now giving information for them to recall and remember and is easy, is simple. And it's already been done by the current world availability of information in the web and it's available for students and students are curious and they, they search for knowledge. And searching for knowledge is not a big thing in that sense. Now, what we need to do is to train the brains of children so that they are using that knowledge in a way, in such a way that it is useful for the society and they can do new things, they can do innovation, they can do more effective things. So how to teach is very important. And then another key point in teaching is the assessment. Our assessment drive learning process. Assessment drive students eagerness for learning and the students are compelled to learn for fulfill the assessment needs. And the students are compelled to be better in the assessment because that is what their parents expect and the society expects and unless you perform for the assessment you will not be successful you will not be considered as a successful person so assessment become a vital assessment drive learning and it's not only the students but also the parents the society and the entire teaching the teaching programs the teachers and the schools all are oriented for assessment so unless you have a good quality assessment that is helpful to improve the quality of learning. Uh, a country will suffer, a country will not prosper from education unless you change system of assessment. Now, having said that, the next thing is evaluation. Evaluation of the performance of a school, performance of an education system uh, is not only the, not only the uh, exam results, but also how much it is useful to the society, how expensive it is, how much uh, uh, trouble it has caused to the society, how much the parents suffering, the children are suffering, and whether the students are enjoying, whether the teachers are enjoying, whether the entire system is enjoying. So that's the, that's the process of evaluation. Now we are coming to the today's topic and we are going to focus on objective. And writing an objective is vital in a research project because that is the one that will take you forward. That is the one that will bring you to a focus. That is the one that specify what you want to do. And that is very important to ask the question, what is your objective? Now, objective has a verb, feature of quality and a subject. I'm sure you are going to understand it when I present some of the examples. Look at this. What is the verb? Verb, yeah, you might say that you want to describe something. Or maybe that you want to improve something. Or you maybe that you want to evaluate something. So that's the verb. And the feature related to what is this? It can be a structure, process, or outcome that we have already mentioned. And then your sample who, where, when, and exceptions. 
you will understand this in the next slide take this example you want to explore the difficulties in reading among grade 3 students or your objective may be you want to analyze impact of not attending schools among year 13 students now see the exploration is just a description of things counting numbers and describing things analyzing is going into more details and you try to find out the reasons and what is happening and explore is even little deeper you want to find out reasons their feelings and emotions and things like that the trend in deterioration of interpersonal skills efi students and and then you might want to compare educational achievements and competencies among those who engage in sports and those who do not engage in sports so that's where you try to compare so these are some of the objectives but then when it comes to a action research that we are very much in, interested in it should be there should be any of these things and we converted to to improve to improve difficulties in reading to improve uh, to or oh, to minimize now it's not improved to minimize the impact of uh, the 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 improve uh, improve the attendance of year 13 students and uh, to to minimize the deterioration of interpersonal skills to improve uh, educational achievements and competencies uh, in sports by 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 engaging in sports. So writing objective can be to explore, analyze, compare, or to improve. So if you think of what you are planning to do, it may be counting or describing, analyzing or comparing, search the cause and effect, or maybe that you want to trial or experiment new intervention, or test whether what you are doing is successful. Accordingly, we can label your research, whether it's a descriptive research, sorry for spellings here, whether it's an analytical research, or exploratory research, experimental research, or action research. We are very much supportive of action research because that is one that will help to directly to change your uh, practice. Now your objective should be smart. What do I mean by smart? It should be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely, can achieve in time. Now, what is specific? You need to be very specific. Yeah, you can't just say that uh, I like to improve attitudes of our students. Attitude is a vast thing and there are so many factors in one. So it's better for you to sort of, you know, confine to some attitudes. I mean, say attitudes regarding reading, attitudes towards parents or attitudes towards the school, attitudes to the so national interest or things like that. And it should be measurable. Now, say, for example, uh, uh, somebody wants to uh, study the influence of uh, ghosts on students' performance. It's difficult to measure, isn't it? I mean, the, uh, how do we assess these ghosts or how do we assess the impact of ghosts on students? But then if you try to evaluate the, the understanding or knowledge or attitudes of parents towards ghosts or how much is the impact of parents' attitudes and understanding about ghosts on the uh, students' perfor school performance. That's a, that's a possible thing. But then uh, it should be measurable and it should be achievable. You see, the, if somebody wants to do action research uh, to, uh, to say, for example, to... Uh, 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 to, uh, to change the attitude of the society, 
uh, with regard to education and then uh, check the student's performance it's difficult it's not easily achievable it's not okay for a uh, action research but then maybe that you can change the parents attitudes on child rearing practices in a classroom in a small group and then see what the what the changes are so achievability is something that you need to think of and it should be realistic you can't think of a topic where it's not realistic where you can't do certain things I mean, you can't uh, create all the students to the same level of intelligence so something like that so you need to think of uh, smart and remember this word smart always you need to be smart in all the aspects not only research objective but everything that you do so here is an example where uh, lord buddha is asking mal balun ke put uh, uh, and and what is the purpose of knowing the width and the length of this globe uh, um is is not not very useful it's not specific it's not uh, is is not very useful so need to think of that line right i think it's time for you to take the pen and pencil and write down your objective i have said that as a teacher you should understand that it's nothing like you writing your own idea on a piece of paper and you see what you have written and you rewrite it and you underline it and that's that's your uh, that's a process of self reflecting you knowing what you are doing clearly just thinking in your mind alone is not sufficient uh, that is very useful uh, in in education terms uh, whatever the thing in the process of learning you writing it down in the piece of paper is one step and the second step would be for you to tell that with your friend and tell it to your teacher and then get their opinion and that is the learning process and in fact in a classroom there is a teaching method called think write pair and share what you do is you ask the student to think on a topic so i have asked you to think about the objective and then you ask the student to write it now i have asked you to write and the next step is, would be for you to uh, uh, share you tell it to your to your friend friend next to you not to the entire classroom uh, so that you check your idea with your friend and is it worth while sharing with the others and then maybe that you improve your idea again and then you share with the entire group so that's the process i am inducing now uh, write it and then share with your friend and in fact uh, uh, in a in a live uh, virtual class Uh, we will be sharing this in the chat room and then you can share it with your friend close to you and then you open it for everybody so that's that the process that should adapt in a in a, a virtual class if you have done that uh in fact this uh, the process of teaching uh, there's what is called right process of think write pair and share that's what we have done i have asked you to think about the objective and then i have asked you to write it on a piece of paper and having done that i invite you to uh, share that with your friend probably in a virtual class maybe in the chat room uh, you will be sharing it with a limited number of friends and then once you get their opinion you feel that you are comfortable yes wow, that is worth while sharing and then you share with the entire group and that is a process of well accepted process of uh, interacting with students think right pair and share so that's what we have done so if you have written your objective now we will move with the rest of the lecture
Now you have to decide on a research method. Research method can be descriptive, analytical, exploratory, experimental action, which I have already mentioned. And then method can be further classified whether it's a qualitative type of data collection or quantitative type of data collection, or it's a mixed method of data collection. Now, when you look at the kinds of data, data can be categorical, yeah, the study is more qualitative study, or numerical, a quantitative type of study. What are the categorical data? They can be nominal data, that is you name more categories. You can say uh, name of a village, the color, the, the ethnicity and things like that. They are nominal, but they can be ordinal. They are, they are categories, but then there's an order. Now, uh, those, who, those who don't like something and those who totally disagree, disagree, agree, or totally agree. So there's an order in which, so they are all uh, uh, categorical data, uh, but they have an order, whereas the first time did not have an order. So you can say very short, short, uh, average, tall, and very tall. So they all become uh, ordinal categorical data. And the numerical is numbers, they are quantitative research. The continuous is any number, any number, your height, the weight, your uh, various, uh, uh, your blood pressure and uh, your score, they are all numbers. And the discrete is they are numbers, but they don't have a zero point. I think it is difficult to understand, but uh, I invite you to sort of think about it and read about it and discuss and understand. I'm not going to uh, tell you what it is because uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult concept to understand. Uh, discrete numbers, uh, best example given is temperature. Temperature uh, does not have a zero value as such. Uh, we say there's no true zero uh, and, and we'll discuss them later. When it comes to analysis of data, you do either descriptive analysis or inferential analysis. That will be discussed when we come to the data analysis section of this lecture later. Now, what is the mixed method? Mixed method is where you use qualitative data analysis as well as quantitative data analysis together simultaneously. It's not a matter of using two research, but it's in the same research. There are six methods of mixed methods. I've just listed them. I will be describing three of them. Convergent design, explanatory sequential design, exploratory sequential design, and then the those are the three basics of mixed method. And there are three other more complex ones and using mixture of the three, the, the any, any of those uh, basic ones, experimental design, social justice design, and multi-stage need assessment. Now, uh, in the convergent design, you have quantitative data, you use statistical analysis and come to conclusion. You simultaneously use qualitative data and do a thematic analysis and then come to conclusion. Sorry for spelling again. And then exploratory sequential design where you uh, have your qualitative data and you use qualitative data to influence the quantitative data collection. Now, one of the example is you do a focus group discussion and gather information to develop a questionnaire for quantitative data gathering. And then quantity data can be analyzed statistically by numbers to come into the conclusion. So uh, there is a exploration in the process of qualitative data analysis where 
you do a research, you do a focus group discussion or in-depth analysis or analysis of documents, analysis of students' writing and things like that. And then you develop a questionnaire for the quantitative survey. The first part is probably done in a smaller sample and then move on to a bigger sample because your questionnaire survey can be done on 100 students without problem. Second one is explanatory sequential model where you do a survey, maybe a questionnaire survey, a standard format, you study thousand students in a school and then when you analyze them, you find that there are certain important things that is happening in the school. And then you find out, uh, you develop a structure for a focus group discussion or in-depth interview with students or uh, to ask a student to write an essay on a topic or something like that to qualitative study. And that will be analyzed uh, to arrive at a conclusion. So here what is happening is your quantitative survey will help you to select the proper sample, design the uh, methodologies for the qualitative data collection that will come to a conclusion. So probably in the, in the school action research, uh, probably you will be using mixed method. You, you have been using mixed method and think of it more and more because mixed methods are much more respected because your authenticity of your results become more because you are using two methods to uh, support your hypothesis or your conclusions. Yes, now you need to think, stop this for a moment and think what is your uh, research method. Think what you are doing. It's easy to think with this uh, quantitative, qualitative or mixed method. If it is mixed method, are you going to have adopt a sequential model where you analyze simultaneously or whether you are going to use uh, a survey first and then to do a qualitative part or whether you are going to do a qualitative and then do quantitative survey. And then whether it's a, only a description analysis, exploration, or whether you are going to do an action research. Okay, if you have done that, we'll move to the rest of the lecture. Now with that understanding, you should be able to write this. Your topic can be any of those things, student-centered learning, student engagement and active learning, asking questions to engage students and so on and so forth. There can be so many topics related to teaching and learning process. It can be any one of those four, that is to describe the student-centered learning or analyze student-centered learning or explore student-centered learning or to improve student-centered learning. So it can be any of those. And the sample is in year five students in such and such a school. And how? Uh, by introducing, uh, introducing, say, think, pair, and share method in the classroom, or something like that. So, under each of these topics, you can think of, or say, say, uh, to uh, to improve to improve the use of a class magazine for learning in year 10 students by introducing something, introducing a, a regular practice of writing a journal uh, related to each subject or something like that. Uh, you can have uh, to analyze impact of students writing notes in a year 10 class by conducting the class lecture in four sections and at the end of each small section allowing students to write notes. So, so you can think of uh, uh, designing your research and you can have uh, so many topics 
with regard to teaching and learning process here i have given a list here practice based learning student reflective learning students teaching peers exam oriented learning and so on and so forth and maybe that your topic can relate to the social expectations to improve patients expectations uh, uh, expectations of employees and entrepreneurs and social expectations with regard to productivity cost of education attitudes fairness and in examination content of the subject government recommended curriculum equity in education likewise there are so many things topics that you can explore you can analyze you can improve and you can use many methods of doing that now with regard to education outcome outcome examination results on recall questions and application level of questions critical thinking communication skills leadership interpersonal skills empathy can you improve empathy among uh, say year 10 students by teaching literature uh can you improve collaboration among year 5 students uh by helping each other in in preparation for the scholarship exam and likewise that can you improve social social cultural sensitivity uh by teaching uh, literature physical environment again you can have very many topics like uh, building garden and plants and water and toilets food and canteen classroom and theater and library and whether you can change the canteen such a way you can improve the dietary habits of students in the in a school and whether you can use the garden and plants uh, to teach a certain subject so there are so many things that can be done uh, in research now human environment is important and it involves teachers parents students themselves and the society you can test their knowledge skill practice and attitude you can you can you can describe you can analyze you can explore and you can improve now say for example parenting style parenting style is uh, you can improve parenting style uh, among parents of year 5 class or year 1 class by teaching and training process and see the impact whether the students are performing differently and then uh, you can teach parents how to give feedback and see the impact of that and things like that and you can teach them appreciative inquiry so there are wide range of topics that you can you have a choice to select for your study now having selected the topic next challenge is to select a topic a sample selecting a sample is also a vital step and uh, you should be uh, very very careful about in the process of selecting a sample now selecting a sample there are various methods of selecting a sample before doing that it is vital for you to think do you need a sample now many action research we are not now you are not going to do a sample sample because it's essential for you to teach the entire class all the students and it is not ethical to take only a half of the class and teach unless you have a method of teaching the ha uh, second half so most of the action research you engage the entire class and then what is the sample framework sample framework means that what is the entire population that you are thinking of 
say if you want to study the impact of efi scholarship exam on inter interpersonal relationship of efi students in sri lanka your sample framework is the entire cohort of efi students that is very important it's entire cohort say if you want to uh, look at the impact of uh, uh, tuition class on the students attitudes then the framework is the entire cohort of students who attend tuition class in sri lanka so that's a sample framework you have to draw the sample from that sample framework so that is how that is why it is important to define the sample framework now you have to select a sample now why do we sample because it's impossible to study the entire population so therefore you select a sample now selecting the sample size depend on so many factors i'm sorry i'm not going to talk about it in this lecture what i do at the moment is i go to a statistician and ask what should be the number and then get advice but then you should learn how to calculate it i'm not i know about it but then i'm not competent enough to teach another person or oh, i i have not mastered that knowledge to share with you so therefore you have to accept me and we we'll learn it later but then you have to when you say sample there is a method of calculating the sample size and you have to have that size now then come to the question of what is the method of selecting a sample there are two methods one is probability sampling and the second is non probability sample sampling what is meant by probability sampling is when you select a particular person the all all the all the numbers all the members in that sample has a equal chance of being selected for the sample so that's the probability sampling and non probability sampling is doesn't it's, it's not like that and the probability sampling is taken in many of the quantitative surveys and the non probability sampling is taken in many of the qualitative samples qualitative uh, research we look at them in detail now probability sampling there are several methods described random sampling systematic sampling stratified sampling cluster sampling and multi stage sampling random sampling is like like drawing lots and you to randomly select people systematic sampling is where you take them systematically first fifth 10th 15th 20th like that that's systematic way of doing it stratified sampling is i think it's best described in the next slide you can see the simple random samples is is just simple randomly selected in you know, drawing lots or drawing numbers and you select the sample and systematic sample as i said you have here you have taken all third person third third third, third. okay and then stratified sample is you stratify the group now here we have stratified uh, say girls and boys and you have selected two from the girls and three from boys because there is a bigger number among the boys in this uh, in this uh, sample framework first group and then you take you strata stratify them and the cluster sample is you can see number of clusters in here and you have to select two clusters so that's cluster sampling non probability sampling is where you want to do like very much like a qualitative research where you might think of a convenient sample voluntary response sample quota sample purposive sample or referral sampling you will learn this Uh, methods as you go convenient sample as the word implies it's just a convenience that decides on sampling those who are close by or those who have come for that shop or those who are met in the in the shopping mall voluntary response maybe in a class you ask students who like to come for this uh, research activity and then there are few comes and then you you engage in the in the research with them so that's voluntary response 
Quota sampling is uh, you take a quota from, say, you take uh, five students from each class. They are all non probability sample. You take only a quota. And purposive sampling is where you know that certain information is available with certain group of people and you approach them and ask. Say, for example, you want to study about the harassments in schools. You approach, uh, approach those who uh, have complained to teachers and take that sample and do the study as a purposive sample. Referral sampling is a snowball sampling. You, you, you have one case of, you know, one case of uh, harassment in school. And then you study that person and then ask that person, do you know anybody else with the same problem? And you approach them and then ask them, do you know anybody? So like that's you snowball. See, I have shown that in pictures, convenient sample, you have just selected those who are close by and done the study. Voluntary well, sample in the class, you ask who would like to come for this research and then see the voluntary response sample. And then purposive sample, you just select and you know that these people are important for this purpose and they, you take this, them for study. And snowball is you have one person, he, he select three more, this is like that. That's a snowball sample. Now, I think it is important for you to think what is your sample. When you write your sample, you need to write who, where, when, who is not, that is exceptions, and the method of sample. You can pause this uh, presentation now and think of uh, your sample. And as I said earlier, uh, it is very important for you to now stop everything and write down what is your sample. Remember, you write, you need to write who or what, where, when, and who is not, that is exceptions, and then write the method of sampling. See, as much as you write an objective, writing your sample is important. But many of you will write this, my sample is the entire class. I'm not going to select a special sample. But in case if you are selecting a sample, better to be very specific and then uh, write it uh, clearly and properly so that uh, what you are doing is uh, very clean. Having done that, next step would be to write a proposal for education research. Now, I know that when we come to the research in medical practice, it is essential and vital we should write a pro proposal for education research and get ethical approval. I don't think that we have the same system in education. However, it is better to write a proposal and get the permission from the uh, or school principal or a school committee before you embarking on any type of education research. And that is the, that is to ensure that you are engaging in ethical practice. Now, ethics of education research is another topic, which I'm not going to detail here, but then to give you the principles of ethics. Ethics means that you need to be respectful towards the society. You have to respect the rights of your students. And, and when you are doing a research, it's a research. So therefore, they have the right to engage in the research or not to engage in the research. So, and unless you sort of explain what you are doing to them, it is not ethical. And that should not cause any harm to students. And that should not cause any disparity in the, in the research group. So therefore, it is very important for you to write down a proposal, write down in detail what you are going to do and what you are not going to do and what you are going to assess and how you are going to collect data, how you are going to analyze that data. All that become important and you must write it down and show it to your principal. Now, for the purpose of this, this research activity, better to get the permission, but we are not very keen on writing a detailed proposal because 
writing a proposal is a tedious thing and then some some just take a step back on doing the research but don't do that uh, engage in the research right simple thing and that is good and in case those who are expecting to obtain the certificate of successful completion we expect you to write a proposal and submit to us so your research proposal should have a topic which we have already described and background and rationale which we have not described actually but it is your thinking what you are thinking why what why are you doing this what made you think about it and this is your own idea and then write the main objective and write specific objectives usually this is only one and this is maybe a bit two or three specific objectives writing 10 specific objectives become little too much but it's better to have two or three and then methodology and sample what exactly you are going to do what exactly you want to measure should be mentioned here and then what sort of results you are going to obtain and how are you going to analyze them are they quantitative results or qualitative results or how are you going to analyze them statistical analysis or thematic analysis or is it a mixed method and what are you going to do and then how are you going to draw conclusions and how are you going to give recommendations so uh, writing a research proposal is important and in fact it's important chanakya says that you need to learn from mistake of others you can't live long enough to make them all yourself so learn by mistakes and then uh, you share your information with your friends and help the others also to learn so finally i invite you all to get engaged in this exercise do it yourself unless you do it you are not going to learn it i can show only the part this is what the socrates also said i can't teach anything anybody i can show only the part so lord buddha also say that same, same same thing similar now next most important question is now we have thought of a topic and we have thought of a intervention or innovation and you have thought of an objective and you have thought of research methodology and you have thought of a sample and then you have written a proposal next thing is probably while throughout the process you need to think how to ensure quality of data collection and the quality of the research the next lecture will discuss how to ensure the quality of the research and it is very important for us to focus now and write down this proposal and then uh make sure that we are very specific about what we are thinking and we ourselves should understand what exactly we are doing so unless we have that understanding uh, we can't proceed so before you go to the next lecture part 3 uh, better to sit and write down a proposal and then we'll improve it as we go thank you